Hello, this is Miss Rich, and this is Chapter 1 at Home video, Section 1 1 in the Practice of Statistics. And let remi me remind you that since this is our first video, um, make sure that you remember that you are should be watching this along with your book being open and your notes. Um, you should still be doing your reading and um, make sure I'm just going to highlight here as we go through your reading some of the things that I found that get it particularly difficult or things that you need to really pay attention to. So take notes as we go. Um, it's a good idea to have sticky notes ready. So if you have a question, you could write it on the sticky notes because when we come into class, we'll put those on the board and I can answer those quickly. But remember, it is your responsibility to come into class well prepared. We will have a reading and video quiz at the beginning. Our section 1-1 one, one here on page 8. First of all, we're looking at categorical variables and almost all of the first, almost all of this statistics course, we will be working with quantitative data. So this is one of the few times we'll be working with categorical data. Um, and there are a couple things tricky, so you really need to make sure you pay attention to those things. Here's a list of categorical data that is in example eight, example on page eight, excuse me. And uh, make sure you read what, what this was about, but um, it was radio stations and, and these people were interviewed as to what type of uh, radio stations they listen to. And notice we have two tables. The one on the left here is a frequency table. Frequency table is counts. That is different than relative frequency. which is percents, very important difference. It's always better to use percents because then you can make a better comparison. So when we just look at that data, we can already infer a few things. Remember the variable is not adult contemporary, adult standards and so forth. Those are values. The variable is the type of music. So remember, the variable is the question that's being asked. The values of that are these things listed here, country, news talk, oldies, religious, etc. Very important distinction. We've got our count on the left and our percent on the right. And that count, for instance, for news talk is just 2,179 people. And we divide that by 13838, the total at the bottom here. which would give us our percent, 15.7. So make sure you understand what those percents mean. When I ask you tomorrow on your quiz, I'll probably ask you for country, what does the 14.9% mean there? So make, make sure you're aware of what each of those numbers mean. Now, categorical data we've already talked about is displayed in bar graphs or pie charts. Now it's always, like I said, better to use percents. You can use percents on the vertical axis of your bar graph right over here. Here it's using count, but um, of course percents is always used in a pie chart. We will not do those much in class. They just take so much time to do. But notice on bar graphs, very important, the bars are not touching right here between the bars and keeps jumping back. Um, so that's important. Categorical data must be displayed in one of these two ways, a bar graph or a pie chart. And since we won't do pie charts regularly, we will be using the bar graphs. Now, two-way tables makes it much more interesting. And this is where it sometimes gets confusing. Here, this data was on page 12. And be sure you understand what it is about. Um, here, there were people in interviewed. Let's see, it was 4,826 randomly selected young adults aged 19 to 25. And they were asked the question, what do you think are the chances 
you will have much more than a middle class income at the age of 30. So they were answering these questions. So first of all, what are the values described? Again, the values are not, um, excuse me, the variables are not male and female. The variables are either number one, what is your gender? And the second variable is how would you, is answering the question, um, What do you think are the chances you will have much more than a middle class income at the age of 30? So those are the two actual variables, the chance and the gender. So these are the variables, of the, the values of the variables going along and the numbers to the right. Now notice at the end, you have your column totals on each side. And those numbers are totaling up each row and column. And those marginal totals give you a look at the total number of males, total number of females, total number of people who had said almost no chance and so forth. But again, this data doesn't really mean much until we look at it as percents. So let's do that. Okay, there's two types of percents we're going to look at. First of all, the marginal distribution. Percents are often more informative than counts, especially when comparing groups of different sizes. That's why it's really important to put in percents. So marginal distributions, remember the name, mar the word margin, is going to be dividing by the grand total of all the people that were interviewed. So we're going to use this number here, 4826, to get our mar marginal to totals. So the percent of people total who answered almost no chance would be 194 divided by 4826. So you always need to make sure you're answering the question that you're being asked. 4% would give, be that total. The um, total amount of people who answered some chance is 14.8%. So this has nothing to do with gender. This is the total percent out of the full total 4,826 people how they answered. Now, again, to graph categorical data, we're going to usually put it in a bar graph. And notice they're separate. And when you're talking about a bar graph, make sure you don't use words of shape like mounded or symmetric or skewed to the left, skewed to the right, because that doesn't make sense for categorical data. It doesn't make sense to say this one's skewed towards almost none. We would describe, though, which one's more, which one's less, and so forth. So like we said, marginal distributions tell us nothing about the relationship between the two variables. That's why we need conditional distributions. And this is where I find that people um, get confused. Really have to pay attention to what question you're going to be asked. So we're going to select the row or columns of interest and use the data in the table to calculate the conditional distribution in percents and we're going to make a graph to display it. And the two types of graphs when you have two variables, in this case, was gender and whether or not you think how wealthy you're going to be. Um, since there are two variables, we can either use a side-by-side -side bar graph or a segmented bar graph. And you're going to see both of those in your reading, and you can choose either one. Either one is perfectly correct. So here's our data again. And notice it says, calculate the conditional distribution, I'm going to try it this way instead, of opinion among males. Examine the relationship between gender and opinion. So we're calculating the distribution among males. So that is our condition and that is our clue as to what we're going to divide by. We're going to divide by the total number of males, which is 2, 4, 5, 9 every time. Very, very important to think about Am I dividing by these totals or am I dividing by these totals? And here we're, to we're totally using the totals here at the bottom because that's the total number of females and the total number of males. Okay, so um, here the total percent of males, all the males, 2459, that say almost no chance, 98, is 4%. And then I have all the totals there and I can put it 
in a bar graph, very much like we did before. Notice this is percent. You've got to have your labels to the side. Now we're going to add in females. Notice this bottom number is the total number of females. I know that doesn't sound very difficult right now, but you'd be amazed when you're asked a question that's really general. It gets confusing as to whether to divide by these column totals or row totals. So we do the, do the um, percents for the females, and that gives us these red bars. And we can easily look and see, well, how does the male and female compare? Well, they're not a lot different. More females, a higher percentage of females said some chance. It's almost identical for 50-50, which isn't really surprising. About the same for almost no chance. But you can talk about the similarities and differences. Make sure when you're doing that, you talk about every category when you're describing these distributions. Okay, the second way to do it is this um, segmented bar graph. Now notice you're going to have one long ribbon on each under the males and one under the females. Where's my mouse? There he is. Um, it always adds up to 100%, of course. And so this blue here corresponds to almost no chance. So that's our 4%. So we just make this bar, we, we color it up to 4%. And since we need 11.6% for some chance, we add 4% to 11.6%, and that tells us how much to make red, green, purple, and so forth until we have it all add up to 100%. So for instance, this 30.8 is corresponding to the amount of data that goes from 40-something percent up to 70-something percent. Okay, and that's, that's a really good way to show it. Also, you can see um, which one has more percent between males and females, and you can talk about each category and how really they seem somewhat similar in this distribution. Okay, here's kind of a review of some of the things we talked about. Um, I do want to mention also, to be sure, that you, um, on page 10, that you read through the example about the MP3 players real carefully. Um, why can you not make a pie chart with this data? That question comes up pretty often, and I want you to make sure you understand why that can't be done. And also, I want to remind you that um, if you're doing these um, conditional totals and percents, they won't always add up to 100% because we're rounding, but make sure that they're close to 100%, 98, 99.9, 101, something to that effect. Well, thank you, and make sure you read well, and I will see you next class. Bye-bye.